It's lights out and away we go! What's up guys and girls and welcome back to the F1 podcast. I'm joined by David. Hey, hey everyone. How's it going? The glorious... Oh, should I say ciao, Bella? <laughs> <laughs> the glorious... See, now, is it the Temple of Speed? Because I heard Mr. Kravitz refer to it as the Cathedral of Speed. I've always referred to it. I've always said it's the Temple of Speed. It's I... always been the Temple of Speed. I'm sure it has. <sighs> Glorious <laughs> Monza. <laughs> Unless you have to be a certain red shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I managed to catch... I actually managed to catch Practice 3, Quali and the Races. See... Now, so I've got Practice 3... I watched Perez back it into the barriers at the end of practice three. Was he? At least Singapore's a good time this time. So yeah. It was practice six. He was on. It was Stroll's car stopped very early on in the session. I don't know because I got eight. Oh, was that? No, that was two. Sorry, wasn't it? I think that was two. Was it two? Must have been two or what? Because they were trying to get Stroll's car going again, and he didn't have to retire because he missed practice one because the reserve driver got yeah, because um, the drive. Drogovic got the drive in FP one. Yeah. Yeah, it was two that he'd had that little bit of a mm. incident because yeah, because it's weird. It, it was. I mean, fair play to... I'm going to say it. Fair play to Sainz in the Ferrari because he looked strong throughout oh, he... FP1, FP2 and obviously FP3. And qualifying, obviously. Yeah. I mean, as, as Sainz has had a turbulent season, shall we say? And I think, well, for in general, but Sainz in particular has probably had the rougher time of it. I think this weekend mm. he sort of really put himself back in there. Made a good case for himself, let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean... Because I'm just looking through the practice hands right in front of me. Like I say, second in FP1. Mm. Top of the time sheet. I mean, yeah. I mean, where was Max in FP2? Yeah, but never never read practice Not times as gospel, because you know yourself, you don't know what programs teams were running. No, I know. Because that, hap- that happens every year. Somebody will read, like, um, practice two, Norris is second, and you'll get an article on freaking Autosport. This is Norris's weekend, he's going to run away with it. Mm. But yeah, otherwise, but... he's just... Some of the top guys probably didn't do soft tyre running or something like that. No, but it was like an FP3 Max was second because, like, Sainz had to just literally, Sainz just literally butchered it, like, literally put in a lap, what, 0.86 seconds or something like that between the two? Yeah. So Sainz was on it, and it proved that in qualifying... (laughs) Definitely, yeah. Holy but crap. But of course, famously, the, the track where slipstream can be so critical mm. in quali and where, you know, we all remember the year when half of them didn't actually manage to make a start because they bloody... They were all trying to time each other to the line. Uh, the, the problem was, I actually watched the Formula 2 as well. They're qualifying, and oh my God, what an absolute mess. <laughs> You know, usually the traffic, what we see of traffic, and it's like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it was qualifying, wasn't it? The, wasn't that? Yeah, it was the qualifying about the Ferrari incident. It could have yeah. cost them both. But... Yeah, it was, to, it was to do with not setting a quick enough not being close enough to start to your timing was it? I forget exactly what the... So, 
from when Ferrari went from the the first safety car line, they had to get round the track in a minute and forty three. Yeah. Mm. That's Yeah, stop them going too slow to try and build gaps. Yeah. So they've got to get round to the next the second safety car line or cross the line within a minute and forty three. And this is where the rule got changed because this certain rule um I can never remember which sporting reggae it is because I've not read them yet. Um so I can't exactly quote which one it was. But I still can't believe you're actually intending one day to sit and do that. I'll wait till after the se- um, well I kinda of wanted to do it before next season starts, but they're gonna rewrite some of the regs, aren't they? So, you know. Well they will they'll change them on a regular basis, mm. so and it was basically something to do with, you know, going too slow or under like exceptional circumstances. Now there were cars. Well, it's, 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 it's also to do with because there's always been that hundred and seven percent rule, hasn't it? Yeah, it it is. You, you know, what I mean? that 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 rule's, that rule's been in place for years. Mm. That a car must be within one hundred and seven percent of the fastest time to be eligible to tap part. Yeah. Now it's is... actually never been enforced, sort of thing, because it's basically there to make sure nobody puts a mobile chicane on the track. Mm. Well, that's why it was to. This is why it was one forty three. It was a lap of one forty three. Mm. Because that is basically from what times were being done. So you what you were in the one twenty ones, weren't you? First qualifying. Yeah. So you know one forty three. There's your extra bit, but because they were having to slow down to let all traffic past and to try and build a gap they wanted to the car in front. That's how they got away with it. That's why the stewards didn't take any action against them. Yeah, that's the reason. Because... You know, until well, the stewards could see horses' heads being ordered in rapid succession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... To be honest, we what we see on the feed, you know, what we see on the world feed, you know, we don't have access to all the other cameras on board and all this lot. Mm. So we don't know what truly happened, but I mean, this is going to sound quite sour. I mean, you know, I believe they both should have yeah. been possibly you sour, penal. never? I believe they both possibly should have been penalised. The problem mm-hmm. was, that could have screwed them both, because that would have been a five-place grid drop. That's the punishment yeah. for that rule. And to give Ferrari a five place good job at Monza. Yeah, the stewards wouldn't have been walking out of there. That's for <laughs> certain. There'd have been a bloke in a black coat and a hat appearing behind. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like, oh, there's somebody up there going, here, here's whatever you roll. What? No, he's not going here, he's going, Mamma mia! <laughs> You're gonna let them off of the race. <laughs> mm. Apologies to any of you who's listening to <laughs> <sighs> Well. <sighs> That's just completely thrown me off now. <laughs> oh. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but granted... No, we're not, we're not going to see peaches just yet. <laughs> no. But Quali was that weird Quali, though, again, wasn't it? Yeah, which I'm not the biggest fan of. You have to no. run this tyre, this tyre, and this tyre. Because like I say, you're removing that little bit of variation just allows one team to go, let's have a go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Told you. You, you you get to you get to like Q one and someone like Albon or somebody throws us or even um, you look at somebody who was just outside the top ten in Q two, someone like Liam Lawson. Yeah. 
Four sets off, so boom, four eight to eight for someone like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you got your top teams basically know the same. The top six cars, the two Red Bulls, the Ferraris to an extent, the Mercs, and probably the McLarens are, are all pretty confident they're going to be through. Because mm. we can't really say the Aston oh, Martin because the Aston Martin lacked. Well, no, I, I was there thinking if I say the Aston Martin as well, that's all 10 spots you. So maybe... Yeah, but... I mean, Ferrari have been the one. But you've got the likes of the Alfa Tauris, the Hasses. Heck, the Alfa Romeo. Who mm. just get a lap hooked up and can find themselves into the top 10. Wasn't it the... Was it this race or was it Zambot? Where they both the Alphas ended up anti having this problem with the anti stalled. I think it was Zambo, one I can't hear about it this time. Hmm. But Has uh, I mean the Alpine, what is going on there? They quite the, the, the car that came third at Zambo. Yeah. Let's have a Gasly got a podium at Zanvar, and they were 17th and 18th? In quarter in Q1. Or 16th and 17th. Yeah. 17th and 18th in, in Q1. In a lot of ways, is this just... What's the word I'm looking for? The volatility of the midfield now. I mean, let's be honest, you've got... You go. as you, I've just said it a minute ago. You've got three, te- you've got three teams that are out front. Red Bull are probably a step ahead of the other two, but you've got three teams that are out front. Mm. Mm. You know, Red Bull, Ferrari, Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren on Mercedes is difficult to call, but not McLaren's doing. But then well. the rest, McLaren, I would actually put McLaren slightly ahead of Mercedes, but but then the rest of the field, with maybe the exception of kind of Haas, are all. Not a lot between them. No. And that Williams was a weapon. Oh, Al- Albon's just thinking... Albon's just... <laughs> Albon's the guy who rocks up to a race in a car that's about four years old, that's half a problem, but just drives it like he's stolen. Yeah. Because I, I did see the... the interview... where... I think it was like, was it Lazenby and that lot? They were talking mm. to George, uh, George and Albon, and God, that was funny. Mm. You know, I've, I've made the analogy before, but the big thing funny is a bit like the touring cars, especially the entire grid is, where you can win race one in the touring cars in a weekend, mm. and you can be 21st in race two. Yeah. And you've not done anything wrong. There's just that many cars that close together. That that's your range. Yeah. And that's kind of where the F1 is. Let's say you can come third and then the next race qualify 17th. You've not done all wrong, it's just. No. I guess different tracks as well. Obviously, say Monza, a circuit, they fewer speed. And if they could lock the bat wings off and just hang on through the chicanes, it'd be. Hmm. <laughs> Turn them into missiles. Hmm. No, that's what Ferrari were trying to do towards the end. <sighs> I mean, but anyway, that's jumping ahead of ourselves. You know, Ma- Max was a bloody Red Bull in a Ferrari sandwich. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, and I must. And this, and this is where, as you know, I'm not a Ferrari fan, but to see a Ferrari, see Sainz shove that Ferrari on pole in front of the Tifosi. Yeah, right, but it was made, good. It made him happy, I bet. I'd say, even not a Ferrari fan, I looked at that and I thought, yeah, that's right. Mm. You know what I mean? I know that sounds stupid. I've said to you before, there's something about those red cars, whether you're a fan or not, you, you've got to accept there's something more. Didn't look very nice, though, did they? I, don't, I didn't mind that livery with the yellow one, actually. I, I like want, it. I want the Alfa Romeo to keep that livery. Yeah, that looked lovely, didn't it, with the Italian flags across it? Mm. As we keep saying, though, when are Williams getting this livery we all voted for? Isn't it? I'm sure it's coming up. And I'm, I'm hoping so, because it's going to look and amazing. Mm. It might be the one time I actually spend money on official merch in fact if I can get a remortgage in time. Because... <laughs> yeah, no. It's... Uh... It's 
It's going to be interesting. I think. I think it was Singapore. We'll soon see where it where it's. Oh, going we'll to find out. Yeah, I've, I've heard that we'll be talking about it at the time. So. Mm. And. Uh, it was nice. I mean, it was nice to see George up there for cry for Christ's sake. I mean, he's had George for well album. Fair and like I say, for me, I think the first time Piastri out qualified Norris. Yep. Has he got Louis in between them? Hmm. <laughs> but you and know, Alonso. Piastri's rounds out of the top ten. Although he's also still not the only driver who's made Q three. Well, maybe not the only. I'm assuming Max has done it. But has made Q3 in every single qualifying session this year. Probably. If memory serves, it's all about you. Maybe I'm, I'm assuming Max has done it as well. Oh, yeah. But he's about the only driver who has literally made Q3 every single session this year. <laughs> but... <laughs> I was just sat here thinking, be, like, before we started talking. To Don't him. do that. Don't do that. It's dangerous. No, but he... The weird thing is, is we're not seeing a lot of, we haven't seen, well, bar Perez, not really seeing many mistakes either. No, did we not get, did we, was it not a case that we didn't get a single yellow flag or race again? Uh, yeah, no, the yellow flags were safe. Yellow flags and safety gear with the F2. Bar the no, bar the start. I don't think we actually had a yellow flag during the actual racing. No, we didn't. Which the, the yeah, you know, with the exception of Yuki's car, which yeah. died before it began, and bar, then there was like, one other, there was one other retired late on one there. Yeah, but I think they got back to the pits, didn't they? Yeah, they got the car to the pits, but we seem to have hit a um, a set where reliability, yeah, Esteban in the mm. Ocon in the Alpine. The reliability this year, maybe it's going to dip a little towards the end, yeah. as the pressure of this many races in a season, and because we had a couple of cars make component changes, I know Perez did, but they used ones that were already in the system, so no penalty was. Yeah, Perez. Was it Leclerc? Was the other one I seem to remember? Yeah. Perez, Perez took a gearbox, which I'm assuming is because I assume he's he got took, damaged. No, he took an engine. When he day. backed in. I thought he took a gearbox. I thought he took an end. I thought he took an end. He took something out of the pool. But it was one that was already in the system, so there was yeah. no penalty involved. Hmm. Yeah, it was some. It was one that was already in the pool. It was after he'd had that little incident. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I like Perez. You know I do. You know I... there are yeah, but there are times where it's like, like qualifying. For example, there. You know he qualified fifth. I know that cars, them cars, the cars got to be set up more for Max. Yeah, it's, it's one of them. It's, it's difficult because it's the one consistency we've had since Max joined Red Bull is every single teammate he's had. Has struggled. Yeah. I mean, we've already done. We had Danny Rick. I don't think we did. We quite have Danny Rick. Did we have Danny Rick? Was it not? Was it not um, Ricardo? But was it Danny? Was it was it Weber? Did Weber and Max ever? Did Weber and Max ever drive together? No. Oh no, Weber been Ferrari by then, wasn't he? Yeah. No, it was Danny Rick. Danny Rick and Max. Danny did. Rick. Then Albon. Yeah. Now, Sergio, now, to be honest, I think Sergio's got the closest to him. Because you've got to remember there was Vettel as well, but Vettel was... That's what I'm saying, had Vettel not gone to... Wasn't it Danny Rick sort of pushed Vettel out when he came in as the young hot shot? Mm. And Vettel went to Ferrari. Yeah. Chasing his fifth world title that never happened. Yeah. Then when Dan Max along Danny Rick and then say Albon, and Albon struggled, went, ended up got a DTM and then come back to Williams and bloody hell. I mean, I mean there was Kvyat, but that was who Max replaced. So, 
and stole his girlfriend while he was at it. I wasn't going to reference that. I was thinking, <laughs> but I wasn't going to say it. I'm going to oh, leave that one. I said it. Mm. But Kibiak does still see his kid. I... Fair enough. And obviously Max has no issue with that because Max knows it's obviously it's not his kid, so but hmm. he doesn't treat that kid any differently. And you can see that. I um, as this goes back to what I said to you slightly off air, I must admit I take very little interest outside of the actual racing these days just because I can't be bothered. To be really honest. Well it's not that, it's just like I've i I've seen you know, I've seen pictures of bloody Max and Michael Schumacher and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, so it kind of it proves sort of how. Yeah, because it was Max and Mick when Mick was young. It's yeah. Just... It's like where's Mick disappeared to? There was. Well, couple... now Mick reserve driver, yes, isn't he? and he's doing but... whatever. Yeah, I know, but there was a couple of times where you would see him at the races, stood next to Toto. He's yeah. probably still he's probably still around. It's just it depends what the camera's trying to look at. Mm. I mean, let's this weekend every all eyes were on the red garage. They were. Don't don't forget as well. We don't Sky don't pick. I mean, I assume I watch this guy. I know you do. Sky don't pick what they show. No. They just pick up the world feed now. The world feed is often done at the circus. I chance there any Italian director this weekend. Yeah. They're gonna be a bit Italy heavy. Then again, it's like he was a bit Max heavy in. Zambor. Zambor. Yeah. He was Lewis Heavy in Silverstone for a lot of years. Mm. That's how the world works. So who's it going to be heavy when we go to Singapore? I was just thinking that. Would Albon be classed as a close? Would be classed as tie by? Well, where's Guan Yu? We to... well, which one is it? Guan Yu Zhou or Yuki? Because Guan Yu yours. Guan Yu Zhou is Chinese, China. Indian. Yuki's Japanese. Hmm. It's the uh, Shanghai one, Guan Yu. Don't know. We've helped. I have. I just remember back before he was announced as a driver, was it an Alfa Romeo dealership in Shanghai, China, put this big mural on the wall with him on before the official announcement had been made? Uh, drivers. Sorry, I'm just. We're just sort of. Uh, fact fact checking here before we offend somebody. No, Guan Yu Zhou is Chinese. China. Yeah, that's what I said. That's it's, what I said. it's kind of a shame, really, because the Chinese it'd have been heavily focused if the China Chinese Grand Prix had been still been on the uh, grid. Yeah, born 1999 in Shanghai, China. Hmm. And then obviously the Japanese Grand Prix might be. Might go towards, yeah, more towards the likes of Yuki. More towards Yuki. I'm not going to pronounce his place of birth because I don't want to butcher it. It's like, um, Sagamarau. Like, yeah, I ain't going to get that. It looks simple Saga until Mahara. you start trying to say it. There's something like that. Yeah. That sounds like something you need tablets for. <laughs> but it's just. <laughs> It's just like crazy. I'm trying to push train of thought again, haven't Yeah. Well, this is, I think we've just gone to the race. So, speaking of Yuki, that's a great segue into the style of the race because it's one thing Yuki didn't manage to do. Yeah. What the hell? See. The, engine... the car just yeah, died. But, yeah, but the engine Listen, I look, gave... It cut to an onboard and there was smoke coming out of the cockpit. That's what I mean. There was smoke coming maybe out was, of the Maybe front. it was just really mad. Maybe it was just really mad. Did, um, they, did these cars I... have, actually have rear ears? Yes, in the side pods. What the hell was... Why was the smoke coming from the front? I don't honestly know what's in the front. 
I don't, I don't, honest question, honest I don't know. I mean, unless he was sort of coming from, because there is, there is some like control electronics are under the seat. So whether it was those, it was just the way the smoke came round the seat, made it look like it was coming out of the front. Well, when he stopped, you could see the smoke. Yeah, I know. If you're... On the front of the front wing bay. Sort of that area. But yeah, there's nothing. There's very little in front of the drivers. Very little. The mm. crash sound. That's about it. Yeah, it just seemed, it just seemed a bit weird to be seeing the smoke. But, so that caused us a good 20, 25 minutes of delays while they... I think it must have been trapped in gear or something, because it at was. one point you could see the marshals trying to push it, and he just didn't want to go. Mm. I don't get... Even watching the highlights, yes, they aborted the start. They went round again. Because I, I think they were banking on them trying to get that car out of the way quickly. When they got back to the grid, what took them so long to bugger around? I, I imagine, I honestly wasn't sure if they were trying to. They were, they were hoping they were going to get Yuki's car move very quickly because that. I don't think they wanted to go through the rigmarole of putting everyone back on the track. I suppose Red Bull didn't and get done. It was, it was Alpha Romeo. What? It was two Alpha mechanics jumped the wall early. Oh, was it? Oh, right. It looked like, it yeah, they like were. Red Bull. They, were they, had the, they, had, they had black overalls, you know, oh, flying right. around the middle. So it was they were Alpha guys. Did they get done for that? No, I think in the end that caused them to say, right, we're going to have to let people on. Plus, as well, the. the I'm guessing race control were hoping that car was going to get pushed out of the way or just shoved out of the way and we can get going. Mm. And when it couldn't, that's when they had to start. Because they gave them the second um, formation lap. Yeah, they'd done the aborted start, given the second formation. But then, you know, they were just... I mean, that was shocking because yeah. the cars will have been getting a bit toasty sat there. Well, the big advantage now with the hybrid era stuff, they can actually switch the engines off and restart themselves. Yeah, I know that, but it was it was just if they just told the drivers could... right, shut the engines down, and then all of a sudden mm. they start the freaking go sequence. Hey, that come on, that come on, that'd have been interesting. Well, everybody shut the engines down. Next minute, the go sequence goes. It's like shit, scramble. Yeah, <laughs> boom. <laughs> He's got the jump leads. It was just, yeah, they just <laughs> they, they just seemed to take too long to decide what they were going to do, and in the end, they just. I think I think we're kind of I think we're kind of suffering here now. This is the FIA who no longer want to make knee jerk reactions. Hmm. You know what I mean? They're trying to. The problem is, what, what were they going to do if they were going to start that frigging race and them two mechanics were st stood on the grid? Well, to be honest, there wouldn't have been a big issue to me because they would have been well off the side of the track. It's a pretty wide... I get what you're saying, it would have been wrong, there'd have been investigations and fines, but I don't think there'd have been any real big danger. Well, they'd have just had to do a formation that, wouldn't they, and then so they could clear. Hmm. But yeah, no... Let's I see, I think about Monza is it's... Yeah, I noticed them jump the wall, and I'm like, should they even be there? No. I thought it was Red Bull at first, and then, as you said, it wasn't. No, I'm, it was... I'm pretty sure, I mean, anyone in the comments who think, who thinks I'm wrong, you know, feel free, but I'm pretty sure they were Alpha Romeo overalls. Yeah. But they still, but they, um, they said, didn't they? The trouble is, because of the way Monza set up, 
the actual grids quite a bit forward from the garages. So for all the mechanics who got back to the garages and started putting the stuff ready. Oh, they were legging it back up. They had to leg it up, didn't they? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was just... I don't know. It was a bit of a... Are you going to decide and get your finger out your ass and decide what you're going to do here? Hmm. And this is what I mean about the FIA. One minute they can be heavy on, oh, red flag this, red flag that, or, you know, they're quite quick. Yeah, with first, decisions. I think I've said, well, I'm, I'm not a big fan of these, let's just red flag things very quickly. Said, I get safety, I am never going to condone being unsafe. Mm. But honestly, I think a grid held under a safety car is 95% as safe as a red flag in most situations. It depends on you, but I think after. The problem is, I think I know why they're chucking more red flags. It's because of after after Japan last year. Yeah, oh, 100%. But let's not forget, Japan last year had one big difference. It was absolutely frigging slaughtering it down. <laughs> which is a Zambo, which I agree with. <laughs> yeah. But there's been two or three times when they've thrown a red flag in dry conditions to me where a safety car would actually just, you know, calm things down enough to get the job done without the massive upset. It just depends the if proceedings. I know, but it just depends if they if they if they have to bring. I mean, <laughs> okay, we're not going to count Australia. We're not going. We'll go back to Australia, but we're not going to count. You know, I they could not have safety card that that had to be red flagged. That was stupid. That was so stuck. That was just genius. Was that? <laughs> so that will that will go to the Australia. The two Alpine. That's 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 actually brings us back to Monza because the two Alpines freaking touched our turn two again, didn't they? Yeah. What is it with those two? We need to start at opposite ends of the grid. <laughs> they do because they're magnetised. Yeah. It's just. Like... I mean, we also had the two McLarens having a little bit of ads badge at one point, and we'll get on to the two Ferraris later. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I was just. But anyway, like, so we. I say, watching the highlights, it just seemed rather. Not exciting. Monza usually. It, it actually was. It was a. And this is where. I'm having a hard time with some non F1 watching people on about what's going on with it. And it's like. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of what's happening at the front right now. I, I admire what we're seeing. I think I've said this last time. We are watching absolute brilliance. Oh, yeah. It's not particularly exciting brilliance, but we're watching unbelievable brilliance. However, at the moment, the actual like middle of the pack, there's some really good stuff going on. Oh yeah, it's more midfield. Like I say, we had the two Ferraris going at him. <laughs> yeah, we had the freaking McLarens performing well till one of them got taken out. Hmm. I mean, I, I personally looking at it, I don't, I don't think Sergeant's safe. Sergeant Williams, no, I would agree. And the problem you've got the Sergeant is the fact that Albon's on such a run of form right now. Yeah. And honestly, I think. The problem you've got is the problem you've got is I've said we've said this last couple of times, I keep saying this and we've now had a announcement out with them um Hamilton's until twenty twenty five. And Russell. Yeah, well yeah, Russell have kind of given us a, a granted it's more hmm. How long until the end of twenty twenty five, which ironically is when Norris's McLaren contract finishes. Well, yeah. Is that a sign that Merck are now playing? I mean maybe the, maybe I'm wrong. But I've said it to you for a while, mate. If you were Toto and Lewis announced tomorrow he's leaving in this season, where's your next driver come? The only person you would really look at would be Norris. By Norris, Alan McConkler, because like I say, as good as Albon's been, his ties to Red Bull are not going to sit well in the Bain Merck team. Oh, we know that. You know? Sergeant, not really up to standard yet. Well, um, go to Aston Martin. I doubt you'd bring Alonso in just because of his age, and Stroll, 
Stroll's, well, not, Stroll's not ready. Don't think Stroll will ever be, will he? I'll be honest with you, I think if it wasn't for the management of that team, would Stroll still be no. there now? No. So then, you then that's it. That, unless you're going to bring, and that, as I said before, I don't think Mick's ready for a, the main Merc drive yet. I'm surprised they don't try and get Mick into that, into that like Williams or into like Williams or the Aston Martin. That would be what I'd be playing for if I was Mercedes. Mm. You know, and cause like I say, as I've said before, and like, like I said, I might as well go to this now, but the funny thing that I noticed actually before the race, Ricardo was still in the intro. Yeah. Now, obviously, we've learned the news since that he's out till at least Japan. Now, I said to you off air, and I'll say it live, why bring him back that close to the end of the season? Lawson's performing admirably. Let him get experience. Because what I keep saying it, what to me, young drivers are missing experience these days. Because there's not the same practice ability, there's not the same ability for younger ones to get behind the wheel of F1 cars and race them. Because practice sessions don't give you race experience. No. Well, you know, it's yeah. like, well, why did, you know, why did they, that was it, yeah, because if you remember, they struck Drogovic in for FP1 this time for Stroll, but then when Stroll, because they, in FP2, they joked with him, because it was crafty yeah. and... Yeah, and Stroll's car broke. And Stroll's car broke, and they joked with him was... in commentary. Was it mm. Anthony Davidson and... I think it was Davidson. It was Davidson. It was Davidson mm. with him, wasn't it? It wasn't Karun this time. No, it was, wasn't Karun. It was... Uh... It was Ant, yeah. It was Ant. But yeah... Yeah, if it was if it was me, I'd leave Lawson in now for the rest of the season. It gives Danny a chance to recover properly rather than try and rush it. Yeah. Well, plus it. Do... If you do, if you do still want him around as a backup driver, which I'm not saying he's not worth it for that, but you're going to give Lawson experience. Uh, yeah, and... ten races worth of experience. Which, if you then want him in a full time drive in say an Alpha Tari, because maybe. He's the next one in the main car when Max's day passes, or even when. I mean, we've, we've got to assume Perez will retire before Max. That's not to get Perez, that's purely an age thing. Look at Alonso, though. <laughs> Alonso's still going. He is, um... but I've said it before, I've said it again. Alonso's just doing it because he bloody can. He's doing it because he can, but he's still kind of getting. Well, he's, he's getting results. He is getting results at certain tracks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking. I mean, Kimmy did it before him. And we seem to be able to, without, we don't seem to be able to go a podcast without mentioning that name. Alan must turn in his chair every time we say it. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, but Alonso, is, Alonso and Kimmy are very much the exception, not the rule. Hmm. Let's be straight here. Most drivers, once you get to mid thirties in F one terms, and that feels really annoying saying that at my age. Mm. <laughs> you sort of back end of your career. You're looking at maybe a move to a different spot. Yeah, but how old is Science? Because twenty nine, and he did not say. Is he really twenty nine? I'm sure he had his birthday, uh, but I'm sure he said he was twenty nine because he said he's. It was his birthday about Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. Date of birth, 1st of the 9th, 94. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, 29. Just 29. Wow, he does not look 29. <laughs> does... Jesus. My like, society was born the last day of the year 2000. Bloody hell. I I suddenly feel old when I see somebody's date of birth and it has two zero at the beginning of it. <laughs> That's not right. Fucking hell. Piastri, 6th of 4th, 2001. Bloody hell. The ironic thing is, I think this is where the joke runs in, that wasn't Alonso's first season about 2000? 
I don't know, I can't remember, without tracking Alonso. Um, and it's just... Just checking, wait one second. Well, the F1 website. The F1 website manages to beautifully tell you absolutely nothing in a lot of words. Yeah, I know. At times. So I'm going to Wikipedia, because it's on there, it has to be true. Uh-huh. I mean, it makes yeah, you... literally, Al- Alonso joined Minardi in 2001. The okay. freaking year that Piastri was born. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when this was all fields. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah, because Alon- how long has Alonso been out with the sport? Um, in a second I can tell you that. Was it a couple, was it a couple of years before his return, or was it... Because yeah. he had that stop gap, didn't he? Did Alonso. Yeah. Though. <laughs> Trying to read, quickly. Not your best point, is it? Skim reading. Sort of. <laughs> he only said one year out. Well, it's not that. I'm, that's, it, Did he? The piece of information I need is actually not. Because he was at McLaren 2015 to 2019, then Alpine in 21. So he actually only had one year out. It was Kim who had quite a gap out in the middle. Because mm. Kimmy went off rallying and all sorts, didn't he? He's probably too busy having the shit. In fact, Kimmy. In fact, Kimmy's first um, championship same year, two thousand and one. Mm. But he then went. He then left in two thousand and nine. Was it? Two thousand and nine. Two thousand and nine, and then came back in twenty twelve. So he only had like three years out. Yeah. And what's Danny? Uh, and what did Danny have out? Danny only had a, he's had about well, technically he's only had not even a year. Or well, he hmm. might have had a year, but now because of his injury. Yeah, I, I was having a shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you, give it to right here. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got. I mean, wow, one, we sidetracked it. And one thing I did notice as well. They. What is it in F1 not apologising for certain language during cooldown rooms? They what m- do you mean, not apologise? Well, they missed Gasly. <laughs> I guess it, uh, it depends um, if they catch six. The thing with live is you don't have the chance to bleep it, as you well know. Oh, well, we know that. But Because there's times you love the opportunity to bleep over me, but unfortunately, I always get you, you little. <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't use this again during another podcast. <laughs> or else he's a complete and utter. I'm putting it away, I swear. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just Folks, I live for the times I throw. I can tell when I've thrown him off his train of thought and I think he's brilliant. <laughs> he does it quite a lot. You can believe you. You can right? hear his you can hear his brain buffering right now. <laughs> yeah, but they missed Gasly swearing at when he had his podium. In the cooldown room. They did apologise this time, I think, for Fred Vasseur saying bullshit during an interview. <laughs> and I think bloody Naomi Schiff was quite taken aback from, from hearing that. Yeah, the thing is, you'd say it in the accent and it'd sound good. You'd be like, bullshit, da. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but Vasseur, isn't Vasseur French? I think he is, yeah. <laughs> so it makes it even worse. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, 
th there's times to catch it and there's times not. And then it's like Crofty mentioning, oh yeah, you hear the drivers. It was one of them mentioned it. Oh yeah, you you know you hear the drivers ra uh, radios, but they're not. They're like delayed, and it's like, well, yeah, mm. you're not going to do that to a live feed, are you? Just in case something goes wrong. Yeah, you, you can't. That's how it happens. Mm. Because it was like Toto one time telling it how it is, and I remember that last season. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few, have, a few have done it over the years. A few other sports have done it. it when you're dealing with adrenaline and emotion, mm. it happens. And I'll tell you what, if people who have a, um, people who get upset about it, to me, well, I just don't see the issue. Oh, it as long as it's not, every, as long as it's not all the time. No. Then. It's people who have just spent the last hour and a half flat out, full of adrenaline. Mm. And especially if they've come on to win a race or something like that. Yeah. Then, you know what? If they drop if they drop an odd swear word, well, but, but I, whatever. Yeah, it was after qualifying. It was because they were talking about the uh, the incident again between Leclerc and mm. Carlos and the whole thing. And he was saying, oh, yeah, bullshit. And it's like... Ooh, he's not happy. Sort of thing. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, fair dues, of course, he's not, you know, he's not going to be happy, but, um, you know, you got, you got the likes of, I mean, we've seen, <laughs> completely sidetracked, but we've seen Toto to go in rage. <laughs> yeah, the both headphones, I'll never forget it. Mm. But they won't be sending many more headphones. <laughs> but we are completely sidetracking ourselves. Really? Us? Never. I mean... Who got fastest lap of the race? Do we know? He asked me. Did he? Was he but finished me? outside the points, so I didn't get any... Anything for it? Yes, Piastri got it after he'd had to pit for the new front wing. Shall after we... Hamilton basically Shall... drove into it. I was going to say, shall we get on to this point now? When uh, up... yeah, this is this is, a, and... this is a sticking point for me because Queen Hamilton gets to drive over the front of him and gets such a little penalty that after knocking him well out of the points, Hamilton loses nothing basically. I was about to say. Ham I, mean, it's, it's... I was about to say Hamilton fans were prepared to be upset here, and I'm glad this is the point where we haven't got Alan with us right now on this podcast. <laughs> I know. I'd love to hear Hamilton fans try and defend it. I mean, what would they probably claim that we actually should have gone out of his way because he's the Lord Hamilton or whatever? But bullshit to a lot of them. I mean, <laughs> sorry, Alan, if you're gonna, if you are gonna listen to this back. You might, you might not, don't know, but anyways, Hamilton was completely in the wrong. Oh, he drove across the front of him. You, well, you saw Hamilton start squeezing Piastri hmm. a, bit, a, a bit, and the next minute, he squeezed him. I mean, even like, to the point that like Perez got piss with science as well and we'll go on to that a bit later a little bit <laughs> but yeah he only got what five second penalty and manages yeah. to just feck off well he was on because the thing is he'd done the tyres around he'd done our old trick and he'd started on the hard and went to medium so was in the race he had the tyre advantage yeah but he was saying um, when he, I mean, he, you know he was giving the old jabber about the tyres hmm saying that he didn't think the tyres were good enough. And it was like, of course they're not going to be good enough to begin with. They haven't got to the fit, you know, they haven't woken up yet. Hmm. I'm thinking, and I was thinking to myself when the contract, when I heard about the contract, I'm thinking, oh, for Christ's sake, does that mean we've got to put up for two more years of uh, Diva Hamilton? Yep. Correct. I mean, don't get me wrong, yes, I will stop myself from getting Lynch right here, but don't get me wrong, his achievements have been good. 
you know, he's well deserved oh, yeah. what he's achieved, what he achieves off track. But the guy's yeah, just a total God, fucking he D. Hard work. He's, he's a total D for half the times, and that's <laughs> my opinion, and I'm going to stick to that one. Yeah, but yeah, to be back to, to the actual race itself, like I say, basically, he drove because we asked to, but and the trouble is, it is a difficult one because the 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 penalties are well set out, the precedent, mm. but sometimes, I think was it Crofty said it after the race. There was two incidents where drivers ended up getting post-race five-second penalties for illegal overtakes. But in both situations, they'd gained more than five seconds on the guy they'd done it to. So he said, don't bother giving place back, just piss off. Yeah. It'll actually it'll work out better for you just to go. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, Perez could have done that at one point. That's what yeah. screwed Perez over a bit. Mm. They took people were taking too many risks on that chicane. I mean, even Piastri struggled with that bloody chicane and all. The first chicane, first corner, oh, yeah. which is usually where I have difficulty with at times. And you have difficulty with most trace on most tracks. Yeah. Let's be honest. But yeah, I think that was it. Was very very unfair. To, okay, I've not been the biggest, as you know, I wasn't the biggest Oscar Piastri fan. And as being a McLaren fan, yes, that's probably a wrong word for me to say originally, but that was surrounding the whole Alpine. Bridgeburn. Yeah, I still stand incident. by and say he, did, he didn't handle that well, but let's be honest, I think he's looking like it was the better move. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was a bit unfair for him to basically get driven into he got I mean what would have made that a little bit more glorious <laughs> Hamilton fans prepare yourselves again if he had took the damage if he'd have picked up a puncher or if something he'd like have that. picked a puncher up that would have been yeah you were karma it would have been like well that fucking serves you right oh yeah we are very uh what shall we say? If you haven't noticed by now, we're... we tell things how it is on this podcast. Oh, yeah. Just... I mean, if you don't like what you're hearing, then I can only apologise. You know, we're only entitled to opinions. But they say opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one, and most of them stink. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, no, that would have been a bit more if you'd have got a puncher off that. Because that would have served him right for it. Because, you know, Oscar was having a good race until that point. Oh, well, actually, he had pretty much all weekend been ahead of Norris. Hmm. Which is an amazing, for only, for that time being, for getting there. I mean, Norris didn't, he had an all right weekend in Norris. I just think, to the point where, in the end... He got stuck behind Albon. Now, Albon mm. was just... <sighs> Christ. What can I say about Albon and that defending? He made that Williams as wide as he could. I mean, he even tried against oh, Hamilton. Yeah. That was just like... Yeah. <laughs> Russell, you know, he had a fair race. Perez, well... Perez had a good recovery from where he started. He did. I mean... Because a solid performance. He, he once again came up against... You talk about wide wide um, Williams. There was an even wider Ferrari going around that track for most of the day. Yeah, he... The problem was... Yeah, Perez started in fifth. Didn't he? Yeah, mm. Paris started in fifth. So for him to put it on the podium, great. Um, but let's get on to the Ferrari, shall we? Yeah, Ferrari, their home Grand Prix. It was a very quiet thing, actually. Not a lot happened, did it? 
No, not really. But the thing that made Signs he I think Signs was playing a little bit of a dangerous game. Do you not agree with that? Yeah, he was push he was pushing the defending a little rough. One hundred percent. I mean, it even infuriated Perez to that point. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it didn't Max seem less bothered, but I think Max was just the Max was just sat by in his time. Oh yeah, we know Let's that. Honest, Ma Max could have followed him round all day, for his second behind him, and still not had an issue. So he wasn't worried. But the likes of Perez had a, a lot more on the line, needed to be through, and yeah, and his his defending at times was robust. Let's put it that way. Well, he he would. He was getting a bit... Because who was it? Somebody said, oh, that was very naughty, and I think that was Max. That was Max, and then Perez was shouting similar things, because at one point, Perez, the engineer, said to him, don't worry, he did the same to Max. Yeah. The underbreaking move. He got mm. very close, and it never got picked up by the stewards. Don't think it ever got picked up. And it's like, well, why? He was he was really close to the line. Oh yeah, they're great. I mean, okay, there is defending. I mean, well, there's defending and there's your defending and you and Alan defence and that never ends. What are you what are you trying to say? That never ends well at times. Um... Wait, well, what what are you <laughs> implying right now? <laughs> A couple of them could have been stewards Why? inquiry. A couple of them could have been stewards inquiry. We really need somebody on as a race steward. Yeah. At times. <laughs> well, your other house normally in the room, and she went. With... Actually, no, she'd be biased towards you. No, she's never in the. Sometimes she's never had been in the room. Sometimes when we, when we've raced, so. Uh, uh, fair enough. Oh no, we definitely need an independent race steward. <laughs> if you if you want to establish it, send your CV to I can start it out at gametimeuk.com. But it's just like yeah, and, and... then <sighs> yeah, and then I think the to go about Ferrari, which was the old Ferrari versus Ferrari. <laughs> I which mean, I... I I I at one point said to the other half we might be about to watch two drivers resign live on TV. I was sat here Big. watching it and I was like, as soon as they said no risk, no risk I'm thinking oh. You wondered if Perez knows what that if Leclerc knows what that means Yeah I Told you, that that one way went to turn one with both front wheels locked I was like I had visions of going straight up the back of sights, putting them both into the friggin inside and the whole of Italy just going up in arms. They were both. I mean, that couldn't have been good for Science either, because he's locked against it was either Perez or Max. Mm. And it's just like when I saw the two Ferraris fighting, I'm thinking, what is going on here? I'm having <laughs> um, flashbacks to. Uh, Red Bull incident. Red Red Bull, the Merck ones, the other one, the, every time you, to talk about it, they go about um, Rosberg and Hamilton at Barcelona yeah. that year. And look who and was they on, both ended up. And look who was on the TV this weekend. I know, I've, I've said it before, <laughs> I love it when they bring him out. <laughs> Should bring him out more often. <laughs> yeah, I give him a permanent position. <laughs> But, I'll ask, yeah, I think uh, I'll ask you to place later on. Because <laughs> I know who I'd get rid of. Um, I think we've got a similar answer, but that's on a postcard link. Comment below who you think we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, um, so of course, race ends. Pretty predictable. Nice to see Saints get the third. So I think it's been a nice little boost for him at a time when he's maybe needed it. 
Yeah, it could have been Leclerc, but... Oh, it could have been Leclerc. It could have been Fiji Russell. Well, it could have been, if... If them two had managed to fall over each other. Oh, yeah. They... They were lucky, is all I will say. They were oh, really yeah. lucky. But, but no, fair play to drive with the Driver of the day went to Sainz, which actually was where my vote went as well. I think he was deserved. I think he put on as good a show as he was going to be able to in the car. See, now, if, if, I'd had a, if I had of been able to vote at the time, I think my vote would have gone to Sainz. Yeah, that's where... For the, if nothing else, for that 14 laps of defending against Verstappen... Yeah, it was a bit robust, but let's be honest, we, it's what we want to see. Yeah, we want we want to see defending, but you want to see defending not to the point of actually causing your opponent to go off. Yeah. I.e. Hamilton and Piastri, or Sargent <laughs> and whoever. Could have been Russell. Oh, Piastri and Norris' collision. Hmm. But, the problem, the problem yeah. is, though, I think we're getting to that point now in the season where, because we've not, what did you say we've got left? I think it's, I think it's eight races at this point. Well, we've got Singapore, Japan. What? Qatar. Singapore, Japan, Qatar. Quarter? Yeah, second. Right, Singapore, Japan, Qatar. USA, quarter. Mexico, Brazil, yeah. Brazil, Vegas, Vegas Abu, Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Yeah, so... one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, eight races. Hmm. So I think because we're getting to the late point now in the season, I think everybody's just everybody is just going for is just trying to get the points they can to That's fight it, yeah. for the constructors. I think they're not bothered. I don't think you know right now. They're not bothered about the championship because as well, the championship is done in it. Let's be honest. Championship's... Well, as far as if it gets to Japan and Max basically wins Singapore, Japan championship's done. He's done it. Yeah, he's done it. Um, but granted, even though when he if he wins championship of Japan. I don't think he's going to stop, you know. I think he wants oh, no. to go the entire season. Well, let's be honest. He's... We're at this point now. I were... Red Bull could win every race this season. Max can't do it because his Perez has won a couple. But if Red Bull managed to win every single race, that's yeah. never happened before. Well, what have they got? Fif... Is it 15? Hmm. If, if that... Well, obviously... Between them... There's 23, there's 23 in the season, minus seven of them has already gone. Minus Imola. I think that's 15. Hmm. Which is already a record. Yeah. But say they have the ability to absolutely blow the opposition out of the water. Hmm. That's what I mean. I don't think once... The title's said and done. It, he won't stop. I don't. No, think, of course he won't. I don't think Perez will either. Well, Perez wants to secure a second. Hmm. I mean, the the drivers' championship is tight between lower down the grid. But it's. Oh not... yeah, and that's the thing. You've got you. You've got to remember those lower places are still worth prize money and worth. There's still a lot to play for, just because it may not be the top. It's still there's still positions there that people are going to be willing to fight very hard for. Yeah, Perez. I don't know if Perez can catch Max. Max is 364 I... points. Perez is 219 points. Let's let's put it this way: mathematically, possibly. Yeah. Realistically. It's going to take some real change in luck for them both. Mm. You know, you've got the likes of Alonso there on 170 points, with Hamilton behind at 164. 
Then yeah. Sainz at 117, Leclerc on 111. There's not much between them two. And then you've got Russell, who's on 109. Yeah. You know, you've got Norris on 79. So, you know, you've got Ocon and Piastri tied on 36 points each. Hmm. So, that's, you know, the big money here is constructors. I mean, Ferrari have managed to now leapfrog Aston Martin. Yeah, well, third and fourth is a good haul of points for them, the way things have been going. Mm. Well, Red Bull is 583 points. That's crazy, considering Mercedes are only on 273 points. Are we not still in a position where technically Max is winning the constructors on his own? Yeah, but Perez has won... No, but what I mean is, does Max on his own not have more points than second place in the constructors? 273 on the for Mercedes. Max is 364. So, yeah. So, yeah, literally, Max is winning the Constructors' Championship. Yeah. Without Perez's points, they'd still be in front. Yeah. That is nuts. Insane. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, Aston Martin have some good races. They can bounce... They can bounce back ahead of Ferrari. Oh, yeah. McLaren's on a... Oh, Ferrari, Ferrari seem to finally be getting a little bit closer to sorting themselves out. It, it could all go disastrously wrong for them at Singapore. <laughs> Why, nothing ever goes wrong for Singapore, for Ferrari. But... Remember in the year that... The two Ferraris tried to sandwich Max. Yeah. I mean, it's safe to say that, you, you know, you, you've got... McLaren have probably secured fifth right now. Because McLaren are sat Which, in... Which, I'll tell you what, if you told them that after the first handful of races, mm. they'd probably be bloody happy with that. I mean, McLaren is sat there on 115 points. Mm. Alpine is six. I don't think I don't think Williams will catch. I mean, I know this is going to sound shocking. Williams in That's... seventh on twenty-one points is considering what last season was. He's not bad. He's not bad considering that Alpha Tower is in tenth for three points only. Yeah, I told you the thing that I spotted when I was looking through. I was looking through it during the last podcast, but I didn't mention it on air because I didn't explain mm. time. But see, there are currently four drivers on the F1 grid who have scored zero points this year. Um, Three of them are Alpha Tauri. Yeah. Three of Alpha Tauri have more drivers zero points than the team he's supposed to have in the season. Mm. I just find a hilarious statistic. And if you'd it's like not to... a good one, it's not one you want. And if you'd like to know who the four four drivers are, it's. Logan Sargent. Everyone but Yuki. <laughs> Logan Sargent, and then obviously Liam Lawson, obviously DeVries, but he's no longer, and obviously Danny Rick, who's not currently driving. But yeah, that's it's nuts to think. You know, all Alpha Tauri's points have been scored. It's the same with Williams. All of Alpha Tauri points have been scored by one driver. All of Williams' points, one driver. But as the point I made a minute ago, Max is technically winning the constructors on his own. Yeah. That's the season we've had. It's been a bit of an insane one in places. Hmm. Is there anything you want to round off with before? Yeah. I'll fire. I'll fire you that comment we made earlier on as a question. Do you think Red Bull can win every single race this season with what's left? 
you're chucking down the gauntlet now, boy. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the skeptic in me, I'll, I'll go answer that. My skeptic in me says, no, something will go wrong. But it hasn't managed to yet. And we're a blooming long way into this season at this point. I mean, the Red Bull fan, want, the Red Bull fan of me, fan side of me wants to say yes, but and here's the but. Post race interview, after the race interview, got me a little bit mm. intrigued. Max's words were, "Nursing a little bit of a problem." Well, I mean, end of season fatigue for components is going to be a thing. It's, as we've alluded to before, with the amount of races we've had this year, oh, yeah, we know, we know, and there was that. no new, there wasn't an upgrade in the amount of engines they were allowed or anything this season. No. So but... I think we're going to have more of that towards the end of the year anyway, where teams are just going to literally be at the end of components. But... And there's going to be penalties coming. But let's be honest, the way things are going right now. Red Bull probably fairly easily for an entire brand new engine in Max's car at Singapore. Mm. Still have Perez winning comfortably. Yeah. And then Max have a brand new engine for the following races. Mm. But it's what it's what is gonna you know, what sort of an issue it was. Probably just staying awake. Yeah. Probably needs to drink more of the energy drink that sponsors his car. Hmm. So I'm gonna quickly move over and to everyone's you... favorite to everyone's favorite part of this podcast, which is the F1 fantasy. Now, I'm going to say it right off the bat: you jammy son of a bitch. Remember what you said to me after the last race. Because in Dutch Grand Prix, I came last by some margin. Yeah. Well, I spun it back this time. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> but it was interesting. <laughs> because, you, you yes, you had the two times on Max. And Perez did you a boost. But I don't. I don't get what's giving you the points as much. I've, I've, no, I've no negatives. I know you've got no negatives. But what... Red Bull is my team. Red Bull is my team. I know, yeah, I know you've got Red Bull. So that must have That's given what... you the... Well, then it's so to you, but, yeah, but your team that has Red Bull... You had two times on Alonso, and you also had Ocon, who lost you points. Uh, he did, didn't he? Because he didn't finish. Yeah, I didn't have a good one. Yeah, that, that's what did for mm. At first, it's just... It was the, heavily, the heavy Red Bull influence of my team. And just generally, my drivers had a fairly solid showing. Reminds me, I need to make I need to make some changes for my team if I can. But <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm actually a lot with. I'm almost losing points by my two times on Verstappen. Because one of the big point winners is places gained, and when he's starting first, it's quite difficult to. I know I'm losing. <laughs> I'm losing my two point two times on that, but. I can say. What did Alan get then? The one that he's got in second. Where did that one come? Second. Oof. Okay, he's slowly creeping the gap to me and all. What loss? Well, if him? we take the overall leaderboard, I'm still third, but yeah, I think we've got a lot closer together this one. Yeah, it has brought us back because, like I say, I'm. 3,351, he's 3,209, and you're now 3,163. I mean, I'm, I'm only 188 points behind you. And I could make that in one race. That's what I mean, there's still races yet 
yet to happen. Oh. That's... It's getting close. So it's going to be interesting when it comes to... Uh, end of the season podcast. And oh, yeah. See what happens. Will I manage to keep that the entire... Will I manage to keep the lead the entire season? Right now, without me changing and deciding the changes, not going to happen. <laughs> that sounds good to me. No, it doesn't. Sounds good to me. No, it doesn't, because I want to win something in my goddamn life. I want to win something in my goddamn life. <laughs> you know how I struggle. Fine. Anything else you want to round off with? Not really, no. Just I think we covered everything in the podcast well. So, obviously, for avid podcast listeners, this one will come out on the Friday, and then the next podcast will be... Far nice time. What are we, 17th? The next race? Yeah, yeah. So then it'll be... Next podcast will be out on the 20th... Basically the 22nd, which will be the weekend of Japan. Yeah. Boy, that's going to be a bugger. Next Monday we'll have to do the Singapore Grand Prix, aren't we? <laughs> Don't make me weep. You know I fucking hate that one. Oh. I absolutely hate Singapore. Um, We're going to have to do it, though. I know. Yeah, well, look, at, like, Japan's going to be the bugger because the race is 6 o'clock in the morning. That's not too bad, honestly. They're better for me than an evening one these days. Yeah, but it's 7, seven till 8, qualifying. Yeah. And then 6 o'clock. Well, the thing is, like, Japan. qualifying. I qualifying, I have no chance. I'll just record it and watch it when I get home because of work. Well, the race just means dragging myself out of bed at a reasonable time in the morning. <laughs> you, you'll catch Singapore, though, won't you? Because that's two till... F- yeah. Two till three. Yeah. And then the race... No problem. The race is one o'clock. The race is one o'clock on the... For Singapore. Hmm. See, just looking... Just doing a quick look before we finish... The track diagram doesn't look any different. But apparently I'm not sure. Apparently there's been changes to Singapore. We'll find out when we race it next Monday. Yeah, but we won't see the we won't see the changes. Well, we will because we'll still we'll race the new layout. We may not notice them, but we'll see them. It depends if they put it in the game. They have. That was part of that update. Was it? Yeah, the last uh, patch notes we had. Oh, shit. Was the update to Singapore layout? Oh, well. Oh, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what's different uh, myself, but... No. It was part of the patch notes. No, yeah, well. Oh, well. So, uh... I'm gonna end this one here, like usual. So, thank you to David for joining me. Thank you for having me. Pleasure as always. Don't forget, you can get your podcast on Spotify, Amazon, and D. You know, wherever you get it from, usually. And (laughs) we shall see you in the next one. So, until then. So long, folks. Goodbye for now.